So in class we already talked about how electric fields are real um, in the sense that they contain energy. Uh, and so I want to start talking about electrostatic uh, energy and potential energy. Um, so electric forces are conservative, much like gravitational forces, uh, that you can associate a potential energy with them. Uh, in the case of uh, th thinking about other cases, which you know about potential energy, and the case of a spring mass system, um, you can kind of visualize the energy stored in the spring. You see it compressed, you know it, it looks like it wants to push back and let go and convert that compression uh, stored energy into motion. Um, in the case of the electric field, it's not apparent where the energy goes, but it goes into the electric field. Okay, so if I move charges around in a way that raises the potential energy of the system, you know, for example, if I were to take you know, two plus charges and say they started in this location with a separation that's that's D, okay, they want to get away from each other, so there's potential to, to move here. Um, but if I move them any cl even closer, like this, so to D over 2, uh, I know that uh, in that urge to get apart is even larger. Because they're closer together, the forces are stronger. Um, and if I let them go from this position, um, they will gain energy in moving back to the situation. Say if I hold this one, this is a little tricky because I have to imagine which one's sitting still and which one's movable. But let's hold this one and let this one move. If I let it go, when it gets back to the original location, it's going to have kinetic energy. Okay, and that kinetic energy is going to be uh, taken from the potential energy uh, that is in this situation where they're close together. And that potential energy is stored in the electric field. Okay. Um, well, let's talk, let's we'll head in that direction. So I'm not going to immediately show you how to calculate the energy stored from the value of the electric field. It turns out you have to integrate all of space. So there's electric fields everywhere in space. You, if you want to calculate the energy storage there, you have to integrate everything. Um, let's start with talking about this scenario um, here that we just mentioned. Um, let me simplify it just by... Um, uh, saying, let's assume instead of having a point charge, let's assume we have a plane of charge. Okay, so let's have a plane of charge here, plus 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 all the way down. This gives us the uh, simplicity of a uniform electric field. Okay, and now we can take our point charge and move it in space. Okay, and the same argument applies. So when I move it closer. Uh, from one point and move it in, um, I, I, what I've done is I'm going to have to do work to do that, right? So if I look up here uh, at this situation, um, to move this charge from here to here, I had to do some work. I had to expend energy to do that because the charge doesn't want to get any closer. Um, and so I can get that energy back if I let it go and it starts to move off to the right and that energy will be released and turned into kinetic energy. So let's calculate first the amount of work that I have to do to move the particle. And that is just going to be, so now what I'm going to calculate first is not the work that I do in moving the particle, but the work that the electric field does on the particle as it's moving. Okay. So if I'm going, let me label my diagram here. Um, I'm moving from point A here, and I'm going to move it in against the electric field to point B here. Okay, um, the work that's done by the electric field uh, is just written as, so this is going from A to B, okay, and this is going to be the integral of the force, which is QE. Now, E is the electric field uh, generated by the sheet charge, and Q is this point charge here, okay? So I'm considering the work done in moving the charge little q against the electric field E, which is going to be sigma over 2 epsilon naught in this case, right? If I have um, charge density sigma on this sheet, I know the value of the electric field. So that's QE, and now I, to get the work that I do in moving over this path, I just integrate over that distance, okay? Where DL uh, vector, I take a little chunk of my path here, DL, and the vector sense is pointing along the direction of the path. Okay, so I've chosen a straight path here, but I can choose any path I like. Okay, but um, the work that's done is written as the following. Okay, now because the electric force is conservative, um, the work that's done in moving it from point A to point B is independent of the path. So I could take a path that goes here, 
I can take a path that does that and goes there, but all that matters is the beginning and end point, okay? And that's a requirement if I'm going to define a potential energy, because what I'll do is define a potential energy with a, each location that the charge may be in space, okay? And so if I can define that function that tells me the potential energy at point A and point B, doesn't matter how I get from point A to point B, um, it just matters that I move from A to B in some way. Now, the, the gravitational analog, if I at the top of a hill, um, is point A, and the bottom of the hill is point B, I know that it doesn't matter. Um, the amount of energy I release doesn't matter how I get from A to B, but if I can move myself from A to B, there's a certain amount of gravitational energy that I can release that will go like M g times the height between these two points if this is mass m here okay and it's the same argument for the electrostatic field it's conservative uh, as i move things the energy uh, gets either stored in the electric field or taken out of the electric field and put into the motion of the charge okay all right so that's the the work done uh, on the by the electric field on the particle as it's moving now the best way to turn this so it, it, that work that you're doing gets is is um, connected to the potential energy. So the idea is if I have to push myself up the hill, okay, I have to do a certain amount of work to get myself up to the top of the hill. I uh, I can get that work back by rolling back down the hill, okay, ignoring friction, of course. And so what I find is that the work that um, that I do, okay to move the ball up is going to be the change in the potential energy of the system, okay, of the ball that um, interacting with the Earth's gravity, okay. So this is the work that I do, okay, so I had to spin energy to put it in a position that now has an increased potential energy. Um, so the same argument applies for the electric field case. So I have the work that I wrote earlier, that's the, um, this is the work done by the force, okay. Um, WAB that I wrote down earlier, which is Q integral from A to B, E dot DL. Um, this is the work done by the electric field. Um, now, I have to oppose the electric field in order to move the particle from point A to point B. So the work done by me in the same process will be the opposite. Okay? And I know that the work that I do in putting the particle in position, I'm you know pushing against the electric field, is work that goes into changing the potential energy. So the potential energy change of the system is just the uh, opposite of this work done by the electric uh, field. And so I can write down that the change in potential energy from moving the, the charged particle from point A to point B is just minus Q integral A to B. Okay, where A and you know A and B are just indicators of points in space. They're not numbers in any sense. I'm just saying I'm going from point A to point B. Um, to do this calculation, I have to pick a path, and I have to parameterize parameterize that path in a way that I can do the integral. Okay. All right. So there's the change in the potential energy. It's just the opposite of the work that's done by the electric field on the particle. It's the work that you do to try to position the particle. It can be negative. It can be positive. In the situation I drew on the previous page, where I'm uh, moving the particle against an electric field, in that case, the um, change in the uh, change in the energy is going to be uh, positive here. So I, I since I move it from this location. Uh, a over to B, um, I have to spend energy to fight against the electric field that wants to push it away. And by doing that, I position it in this location with more energy than it started with in terms of potential energy. So again, if I let it go and let it go back to A, um, it will get to A carrying kinetic energy equal to that change in potential energy. Um, that is also equal to the work that I did to move it from A to B in the first place. Okay. Um, all right, good. Now, um, as I said earlier, this is the change in the potential energy. We can write this also, of course, as the potential energy at location B minus the potential energy at location A is the same integral. Okay, so we have this function U that tells us the potential energy at all points in space. Okay. 
All right, now the definition of the potential energy is a relative one. That's important to know. So this is how I define the potential energy of this uh, conservative force. So it's a relative potential energy. I always have to, to define it relative to some other location in space. So you need to pick a reference point, okay? Um, and so what, again, what matters is the relative change in point A to point B. Is it positive? Is it negative? That tells you if energy is going to be released and turned into kinetic energy or if I have to do work to get it you know, up the hill. Okay. Um,